hi guys welcome to this channel please if you know you've not subscribed to this channel please do that now and also turn on your post notification bell to get a regular prayers that will build your faith build your spiritual life god is about to minister to your situation this morning god is about to meet your need god is about to provide solution to that situation that looked very difficult for you and remember what God cannot do does not exist. You are next in line for a miracle. Please do not forget to turn on your post notification bell to get a regular prayer. There is wisdom in the name of Jesus. There is wisdom in the name of Jesus. If if any one of you lack results, which is a product of lack of wisdom, what's the first thing? Let him ask. You have not because you ask not. Not because God is unable to give it. Let him ask. Let him ask. Let him pray. Let him raise up a petition from a desperate heart that when I begin to pray my prayer not only brings the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom but also activates its operation if prayer can bring wisdom then prayer can make it work too are we together now? yes let him pray I can know a man functioning under the influence of the spirit of God by the results that come from his prayer. Not just his prayer. I need to see the results that come from your prayer. The reason why many ministries have poor prayer meetings is because over time people have concluded that prayer does not work. They cannot see the results from it. Do you know that praying in the spirit capture something the bible calls the hidden wisdom of god that the princes of this world did not know it says for if they had known this they would not crucify the lord of glory there was something paul was doing while he was praying and praying in the spirit that began to grant him access prayer activates the operation of the spirit of wisdom not just bringing the anointing in your life the functionality the operation of the spirit of wisdom is released as you pray while they prayed they didn't know what to do how do we advance the gospel across this territory they prayed and they fasted and the spirit of wisdom came separate me paul and barnabas this is a strategy they stood before Jericho. Listen, when you know that the spirit of wisdom is with you, you will never fear. When you see challenges, all you need to know is to wait till the answer comes. Many of us never wait. We go ahead and say, let the answer follow me. And we call it faith and it damages us into pieces. May never live to have a second chance. When Joshua got before Jericho, the Bible says the fence of Jericho could host five chariots fortified tooth and nail to a point that a prostitute could comfortably live in the fence the fence of Jericho was like CGC how do you penetrate the place do you shoot is it an arrow is it a gun do you jump the spirit of wisdom he said don't worry they circumcised themselves and set their heart apart and an angel just came and reveal the strategy do this do that and the Lord spoke the spirit of wisdom go around the city seven times and on the seventh day go around seven times the spirit of wisdom many of the things that we call prophecy is prophecy yes but what was uttered is the wisdom of God go and bath seven times Go and bath seven times. It is the solution not to all problems, to your problem. Meaning someone else will do it. Not directed by God and not get any solution. You see that? The spirit of wisdom is God's customized solution for your challenges. It's not generic. 
is personal that's why i said it is not it is not the wisdom of the world the wisdom of the world is is universal in application like you say if someone is hungry eat god can tell you if you are hungry dance now that does not make sense but that is his solution for you go and bath seven times and the guy felt insulted Abba, i'm a captain of the syrian army and he went to bath the seventh time the bible says his skin became fresh you see let me tell you this is the mystery behind people doing what does not make sense and still getting results they are not making sense is that they are doing it as directed the spirit of wisdom came whatever he tells you to do do it this is the fountain of wisdom mary knew she did they would have said ah jesus look 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 the the person who sells this wine is here he can tell you jews were not foolish people they knew how to crush wine for kings whatever he tells you do notice that no single miracle of jesus was repeated twice the results were repeated many times but the manifestation of wisdom brought a unique solution for every issue at a certain time he spat on the ground and put in someone's eyes at a certain time he did something else look at him but we keep repeating the same thing and we just faith comes by hearing hearing what the wisdom of god when his wisdom comes to you then you get up and do what he told you to do then your life becomes a wonder lord where are we going to get the venue for this meeting i saw in my visions overflow lord i can't active your venue. i can use my brain to look at several venues which venue in zaria will contain the crowds you are showing me just keep praying Shagabaka, takata, bata. cgc the spirit of wisdom see that as at the time the lord spoke the building had not even been expanded this when the spirit of wisdom speaks don't doubt you can walk on water and every other person who is walking sings except you because the spirit of wisdom is the dimension of the holy spirit that will ensure that what you see this is what makes the life of certain people look miraculous you are doing the same thing but they come and do it and get strange results because they don't do it as desired they wait faith waits until wisdom speaks you don't just act carelessly just because you know no. wisdom is manifested in prayer when we pray the spirit of wisdom begins to speak learn this most of us we are so distracted in our prayer that we do not hear the communications of the spirit of wisdom lord what is the way out to this predicament and challenge in my life and the lord says pray and we pray after five minutes say, god you are not speaking please good night and we just we cheat ourselves there you don't pray as long as you want you pray till the answer comes it's not the issue of 10 minutes or one hour it is when it comes there is an object to your prayer and you begin to pray when 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 cgc became full and the overflows became full it was obvious that when there was a program here there was no other venue that could take us lord what is going to be the way out of this when you know this you know that there's nothing called impossible impossible is the name given to the state before the arrival of the wisdom of god when the wisdom of god comes it will turn a mountain i tell you into a level plain ground is god speaking to you hmm. And all of a sudden, I was praying one time. And the Lord said, because of this, every time Friday night is not available, Sunday night will be available. As simple as it is, that ended the issue of trying to look for all of these things. Lord, the overflows are full now to the roadside. What do we do next? By his wisdom, God was able to profess solution. And we're able to host people. Overflow three is bigger than overflow one, two, and three and i mean overflow one and two together the wisdom of god you see you never see how it would have happened until wisdom creates the way 
then you look and say ah, why didn't i think about it because your small brain cannot think about it my brother you need the wisdom of god joseph after he finished interpreting the dream then the spirit of wisdom came hear the spirit of wisdom speaking let pharaoh find a man who is discreet and wise and appoint him over this and that when there was problem and the people were arguing and it was almost killing moses moses could not do his work because there were so many people and god told him mr man you are going to kill yourself let the spirit of wisdom guide you set men thousands and hundreds and fifties and then appoint elders to take care of them then you just play supervisory roles ah, and moses found rest he would have died and said it's the will of god how many pastors die because they love God but there is no manifestation of the spirit of wisdom to guide the affairs. By the grace of God, one of the principles that help in my being efficient in ministry is the fact that by his wisdom we have created a robust leadership structure that allows me to focus on the ministry of word and prayer. I don't have to come here in the afternoon to check to say, ah, I hope these people did their duty. Through wisdom, a house is built. Is God speaking to us? Everybody say prayer. prayer. Shout it, prayer. prayer. That means if the devil attacks your prayer life, what is he attacking? He's attacking the arrival of a scriptural solution that brings testimonies for you. When you set yourself apart to pray and the devil said it does not matter, among other things, he's robbing you of access to the wisdom of God. Say, I will pray. Shout it, say, I will pray. Men who pray access the wisdom of God. They come up from their prayer life with very strange solutions. Very, very strange solutions. Sometimes solutions that don't make sense. Do not, do not downplay on a leader that knows how to get wisdom through prayer. When you say we have come to our wit's end, then you see another dimension of grace and wisdom. Number two. How is wisdom activated? Wisdom is activated through meditation. Meditation. Noisy people, sorry for you. This is where the devil cheats us. We live in a noisy society. If you are not making noise, your phone is making noise. If your phone is not making noise, the television is making noise. If the television is not making noise, the well-wishers around your house are making noise. Our lives are full of noise that cheats us. There is a dimension of wisdom that only silence can bring. Meditation. Great leaders meditate. You sit down. Thank you. There's got to be a way out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you sit quietly. Do you know sometimes I do this from morning till night. Meditating like a fool. Sometimes I just kneel down in front of my chair and put my head down. I'm waiting waiting and the answer will never come till sometimes late in the night the spirit of wisdom comes majestically doesn't come in a rush and foolishly and carelessly if you don't have patience forget about it because you will not come sometimes you finish all of those things you are praying in the night you just wake up to stretch a little and fire falls from heaven and you sit down this is it this is it It will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. It will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Is the wisdom of God walking in your life? Oh, I fell down the other day when you said receive wisdom. Do you meditate? No, sir. Then the spirit of wisdom may be there, but you are not aligning sufficiently that's why many men of god don't have messages to preach because they write a list of messages and preach one by one and they finish the 35th one and the year is not even up to half the year is not halfway gone and you wonder what do i do inspiration comes in the place of meditation never forget what does it mean to meditate to ponder ponder not just on anything to ponder on truth ponder on the word of god not just to mutter but to ponder to think 
is called imagination it's not like imagination it is called imagination the creation of images by the spirit ah. Genesis 11 before Nimrod began to build he called the people and they began to meditate meditation is not just sitting down under a tree that's a wonderful um, um, what they call it a wonderful way of stimulating meditation but meditation is where your mind is called to a point where it is stimulated to begin to create creativity is a product of meditation let me tell you how the spirit of wisdom works the spirit of wisdom is a creative spirit is the first dimension of the holy spirit we see in genesis chapter one creation the spirit of wisdom creates it creates solutions see what i'm teaching you is 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 a jackpot to your success in life if you understand it creation the solution to every problem you seek already exists in christ but there is a system of transporting it from the realm of the spirit it is called creation it is called the power of imagination where you give the holy spirit your mind like a woman's womb and you allow him to brood upon it that's what happens in meditation you offer like a wife gives her womb over to her husband to be implanted with a seed that's what happens many of us are not creators creation is not just by speaking it is out of the abundance of the heart when that incubation has happened then your speaking is among the process that makes it manifest not many people will teach you this thing i'm teaching you the spirit of wisdom will make your life a wonder if you know how it works. Watch Jesus. This woman was caught in adultery. The very act of it. This is a kind of question where both yes and no would chain you. And Jesus kept quiet and was writing the spirit of wisdom. Immediately the spirit of wisdom landed. Then he spoke. He who does not have sin should cast the first stone. And then the Bible says his speech affected the oldest first. You see, you see how powerful wisdom is? Because the youngest can drop it and the oldest will say, are you, are you stupid? Pick that stone. Then he started with the oldest. If the oldest has dropped the stone, what do you do as the youngest? The miracle is not in dropping the stone. It's who dropped it first. The oldest dropped it down to the last person woman where are your accusers go neither do i condemn you this is the spirit of wisdom it is the spirit of wisdom that suggested the strategy for the salvation of men mm. that instead of everybody dying let's make a caricature out of satan it's called the hidden wisdom let one man come and let the whole world enter in him then let him die so that one man came and satan kept looking for him at a point the holy ghost restrained his hand and satan began to prevail and satan manipulated men to kill jesus and he ran to hell he said demons did you watch what happened i can't believe it i killed jesus and to his shock he saw jesus in hell and he said no this is a joke you can't be in hell say yes i'm here because when you kill sinners they go to hell and so I died sin and here I am in hell give me the keys <sighs> give me the keys give me the keys give me the keys and when the keys were given to him he dislodged principalities and powers made a public show of them and then he not only resurrected he resurrected with many who had died they were in the streets of Jerusalem everybody saw him and he said guys this is it you will um you will go to heaven but i have to be the firstborn among the resurrected so let me go to heaven quickly i'll come back and then you guys will go and he went to heaven poured his blood according to hebrews in the tabernacle became the high priest and then he returned the guys went and he went to the disciples all hail i'm back all power in heaven he disarmed satan not through power through wisdom are we together 
listen let me teach you something i walk in the anointing many results are not dependent on power force wisdom is really what brings dominion because the realm of the spirit is a legal realm you engage through knowledge not just by trying to force things it's the ministry of the angels to do that they are the enforcers of the word of god they confirm the word of the servant but wisdom is solution that's why sometimes you see me ministering to people and you see me doing stupid things i can hold somebody's hand and the holy spirit can say let that person shout jesus and the person just shout jesus and then the person is falling and you are watching me too i'm watching i'm as shocked as you we are all watching the wisdom of the spirit you will now get the formula and run to one small meeting and hold somebody's hand and tell the person to shout jesus and person shouts and looks at you say i've done it say do it again because it was just copying this is one of the big mistake of we young ministers we copy acts without the spirit that brought them are we together yes meditation this is where many of us have missed it that you sit before the lord what's that song brooding over every darkness you are called listen light to shine from dark how can light come out of darkness that's what the bible says he said god who has commanded light to come out of darkness that means the answer is right there with you in your chaos the light the raw material sit down in that situation and meditate and let creation begin to happen when you plant corn the ugliness of the soil and it is still where the new shoot comes out of it's a principle he's brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine in darkness you are brooding over all my darkness you are causing light to shine from dark so in the midst of that financial hardship sit down there that's when creation happens you're not going to run away from the challenge and get a solution somewhere sit in it by the rivers of babylon in the midst of the captivity i sat down there and a vision was opened to me we run away from challenges the miracle is right there sit down there's got to be a way lord my wife no i prayed on there's got to be a way and all of a sudden you allow him to impregnate your mind ha. brothers and sisters i can tell you this your life will be a wonder first to you if you practice this it will be as if you are holding a charm or a genie somewhere that you are winding many of us don't sit down jobless people don't sit down to allow creation happen they just loiter around sir can you give me a job and god is saying i want to speak to you no god i'm, I'm i mean I'm, I'm i want to marry they said I, I can't marry because i don't have a job me i want to and god says sit down now if we can take half the time we spend loitering around to sit down not worrying just find the back of one tree in the night and sit down when other people are snoring their destinies you sit quietly there's got to be a way to my life lord everything is not working nine prayer requests since last year nine of them not answered you are not a liar jesus speak to me and you are just playing you know i told i get who did i give an assignment was it us or school of ministry students no sometimes i don't know the difference but do it still do it go and play worship you don't just sit down and beds are just making noise worship doesn't distract you it steals your spirit and then you sit down sometimes for hours the flesh will never allow you sit down this flesh you see once you sit down you just start thinking ah oh, but that lady is really beautiful you see don't stop still sit down there God, but my father do you know to be honest do you know that i didn't have a good upbringing don't worry this is the flesh trying to distract something 
a time will come your flesh will be frustrated it will give up it's one of the benefits of fasting the flesh is empowered by the health of your body it takes advantage of food so when when food is minimal it it alters the interruption of the flesh yes sir it does ultimately leading to boosting your faith but that's how it works and you sit down lord there has to be a way and the lord sits down and says but you know you have hundred thousand and then a scripture just opens up and now this is god the spirit of wisdom coming to you now and looks at it and says except a corn falls in the ground and the lord can speak to you and say that hundred thousand that is your last money i'm not saying do it go and sow it you are not doing donation just thinking about it and you carry yourself as if you are going to go and die and sow it somewhere the moment you do that the same spirit that spoke to you now goes to your uncle who doesn't like you and say remember i've been telling you you will bless somebody it's time now it's janet it's this person and then your uncle calls you wisdom justified by her children and you are surprised and god says keep trusting me like this for your life and then you sit down and you find out let me tell you how god forces the spirit of wisdom to walk in you sometimes he will close the door of any physical helper in your life pain is a very good way of activating wisdom some of us until you go through certain levels of pain wisdom will never work in your life it's not all pain that is demonic hear what i'm telling you you always receive hundred hundred thousand from your father so every time they are saying the wisdom of god you say yes but what you are mean is the money is coming and then your father says well um i had a dream and i didn't see myself giving you money for five months so what are you saying say exactly that um, a voice spoke to me and that's the voice that has been speaking to me that i got rich that you are benefiting from the same voice said i should leave you alone you may insult and get angry but after two weeks you sit down and in your anger you frown you frown you frown and then you just open a scripture anyhow lord help me and then you just see takes you to the story of the widow in zarafat what did she do you have been reading it because your stomach is full now you read it with your stomach empty then child thy light break forth and you see something you never saw ah god commanded a woman but she was not aware she was commanded but the bible says god already commanded her could it, could it be that there was something she was not receiving? Because God told Elijah, I've commanded her. Whether she, the, the message arrived to her or not is another thing. But me, I've commanded her. But when Elijah arrived, it didn't look like she was aware. I expect her to say, oh, you are the one. You're welcome. Come in. I mean, the loaf is there. The man said, I'm about to die. She would have died not hearing the command or seeing the prophet. The same way God would say, I've answered this person. And you look at the person's life and the answer is not yet there. I meditate a lot. Creation happens in my life through meditation. I have explored the power of imagination. This is not some zodiac, Scientology, metaphysical thing. This is a principle. Listen to the advice that God gave Joshua. Chapter 1 and verse 8. Let's attempt to round up. He said, this book of the law, please give it to us, shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate. I thought I was, do you know, I literally was seeing it. <laughs> Truly speaking, <laughs> you guys are delaying. Okay, this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. Listen, but thou shalt meditate therein meditate therein not meditate any other place you don't meditate on what you want you meditate on the word of god not just look at a newspaper and say hi again Boko Haram. and you are looking and you are thinking about a solution for your church it won't come that way are we together thou shalt meditate during day and night when you meditate 
and information will come from it then you observe to do and then your way becomes prosperous you don't act first you sit down and allow the creative force of God's wisdom come to your life Lord my wedding is five months all we have is hundred thousand the budget is 2.5 there's got to be a way out not hi hey, God you sent me Jesus talk to me my spirit is open I silence every voice of fear silence them first I silence every wicked voice that wants to make God look unfaithful in my life Lord you are faithful and you are sitting down and the spirit of wisdom begins to move the spirit of wisdom can tell you to do anything he can just say call one person and you call the person and he says I'm going to do a transfer you will think it's hundred thousand you will see three million and God says now it has come go and marry your wife and other people will see you and say you that I know Abba my brother and you you will quietly go back and give God glory ah God wisdom has covered for me that's why you see some people whose testimony should be like your own based on the physical parameters you see but their testimonies are a thousand times greater than yours wisdom bail them out someone needs to receive this wisdom tonight because the depending on men forever let God send them remember I told you all blessings come from God through men to you but when you begin to depend on men depending on men is addictive it's addictive those men can even be your father and your mother many of us who have all this right conscious mentality my father you are the one that gave birth to me you are 40 years you are still saying it and God may not cause what is happening in your family but you will see it as a ready tool and push you out and then you sit down and then you worry and call it meditation and God says no worrying I've stopped you from doing that but you sit down and you meditate let me admit to you that you will not meditate one night and get the solution no I wish it were so sometimes it can happen but that's just God's mercy helping you to encourage you so that the day that it doesn't come with the speed you want you will know God has been faithful and you will stay there are people who stay for weeks weeks turn to months every multi-millionaire knows this thing I'm telling you that their result is not just based on what they do but based on the reality that has been altered in their minds and their perceptions it is true way before God blessed this ministry with these crowds I had captured it it's there do you believe what I've taught you tonight my, my prayer for you is not just that you finish a service today and say wow nice <clears throat> but that you go and sit down and say Lord I know I'm a prayer warrior but there is no time in silence to sit quietly wake up in the night and think Lord what is the next key what is the next step there are bills before me what is the next step this is the dimension we must step into as a ministry there has to be a way out don't say there is no way don't join Satan saying there is no way is calling God a liar you open scripture no there is a way ah. light me Lord light me Lord light me Lord like a candle light me Lord light me Lord light me Lord like a candle light me Lord light me Lord light me Lord like a candle light me Lord light me Lord light me Lord like a candle light me Lord my life this thing I've taught you is the secret for the hand of God upon your life financially you will sit down and do business after business and business after business and be shocked that the result will be the same because out of the abundance of the heart, 
what have you incubated in your spirit and your mind it's not about doing things you tell people these things they never listen because most people think men of god know nothing about finances and people run around looking for all kinds of give me money let me do this and god says one thing is needful settle down first Apostle, what do you think I can do to prosper? Sit down. No, I, my, blood, my blood is hot. Calm down. And one, the breath of the spirit will just light that bulb and you stand up circumspectly and with little effort, the Lord will create a wonder out of your life. Hear what I'm saying. Write the challenges. Let me give you an assignment. Go and write out all the challenges that you are trusting God for. And sit with a clean sheet of paper and your Bible and worship and just keep looking at them. Let me teach you this in conclusion. Can I, can I, am I free to teach you? Look at me. <laughs> Pray in tongues for one minute. Pray in tongues for one minute. Light me up. Light me up. Light me up. Like a candle, light me low, light me low, light me low. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something. Jesus was teaching and he said, the eye is the light of the body. Listen carefully. Please, please listen. The eye is the light of the body. Do you know what Jesus was saying? I hope you know Jesus was not teaching a parable. Go and Google the parables of Jesus. You don't see that story as a parable. He was giving something. He was teaching a powerful principle. That the eye. These two objects you see in front of your face. That there is a mystery. Seeing is only one of the functions. And it's simply because that's all science told you. There is a system of transporting realities. To and from the realm of the spirit that only your eyes that's why God healed every blind person he saw there was no blind person that passed Jesus that was not healed there were other cripples that he left them but he was violent on blindness there is a relationship between your eyes and your destiny listen Paul became blinded by the glory of God but God had to open his spiritual eyes to be seen first before the physical one opened. Do you know why your eye closes in the night when you sleep? Light me, Lord. Light my life. Light my destiny. Hmm. Brothers and sisters, there are secrets in this book. When you find it, your results are not just an issue of wish these eyes you see let me tell you what happens anything the eye makes contact with consistently the mind the mind listen to me carefully what your eyes makes contact with it forces your mind to begin to think on that reality now watch this it is not the thinking about it it is an incubation that starts happening in the realm of the spirit now the holy ghost knows the solution are we together now you meditate not just by closing your eyes alone because sometimes you close the physical eyes but you are still seeing are we together now and so that's the reason why you pray well in the night because there are few distractions your eye is seeing but you just see black and white this color sometimes can create noise it is an enemy to meditation are we together go and close a room and sit quietly and play worship and see what happens to you where you are not seeing the speaker Nepa took light and you are using your phone to worship and you pray they don't bring light because it's doing something to you this eye is a transmitter the same way you have a radio wave watch this not just your ears 
this eye the creation of a radio wave is in the similitude of the way God designed men to walk that you lift an antenna and it starts receiving the before you the goal is to get that sound to your radio is that true but you lift up something that something is your eyes that when you begin to make contact with the word of God I don't mean reading it just looking open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things what did David know so you are making contact and all of a sudden let me tell you what will happen very soon your eyes will stop seeing you are looking but you are no longer seeing your mind is what takes over have you seen that happen that you are reading something and for hours you keep reading the same line you can't move forward that's because something more superior than your reading is distracting you in that case worrying the eyes then your ears these things are great i'm showing you notice that you have a selection of songs in your phone or whatever you never sit down particularly to hear them but after hearing them five or six times you know the next song and you can sing along if they ask you to sing it on your own now you can't sing but once they play it you can follow it and sing these are systems the eyes is a very deep and dangerous mystery yes he told the man at get beautiful look at us use your eyes i'm about to talk to you i thought you said give me your ears he said look at us steadfastly and he looked at them and he said now you are seeing what was the requirement of elijah receiving from elijah not if you can hear me if you can was he not looking at him this is your bible i'm not reading an occult book this is your bible when jesus was le was levitating to heaven the bible says they kept looking at him their eyes stayed on him until the clouds received him and something happened to them could it be that the only thing you have been doing with your eyes is to just look around that's why you don't remember the faces of blind people because you cannot see their eyes the 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 part that makes your face recognizable is your eyes let's pray light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light my life. The Bible says, "Doth not wisdom cry. It personifies wisdom. That wisdom is calling on people and say, please, don't attempt to live without me. When the Lord was creating the heavens and the earth, the spirit of wisdom was there. Your life cannot be created without it. The manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is what is responsible for delivering the secrets of the kingdom. Without wisdom, revelation is not even possible. The spirit of wisdom will grant you access to scriptural solutions. Brothers and sisters, you will watch mountains before you crash. And people look at you and say, what wisdom is this? There is a relationship between mighty works and wisdom. Every time you see mighty works, strange results, at the back of it is a scriptural solution. Is a mystery that was unveiled when the spirit of wisdom comes upon you then all other manifestations of the spirit can be made possible without it you are just joking around 
I saw this in my life. I craved for the spirit of wisdom. I pursued it with my life and my all. The day the spirit of wisdom came upon me, I knew. I have been studying the Bible. But brothers and sisters, when the spirit of wisdom comes, your results change immediately in a strange way. The speakings of the spirit. We need this for our families. Could this be why your ministry has been grounded? Could this be why our families never rise to certain extent? We think the thing is just about more money or more this or more that. No, please help them. We are going to spend two or three minutes crying out in the spirit and say, Lord, a baptism. I'm tired of no results in my life. I'm tired of foolish decisions in my life. Pray. Pray and let the spirit of wisdom come upon you. Never stranded of solutions. Never stranded of solution. There is always something to do. There is some, always a way of moving forward. Pray. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Everything that has spread. Everything that has spread. Everything that has spread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I receive a baptism of the spirit of wisdom. I receive the grace to manifest supernatural solutions over every challenge of my life. Lift your voice and pray. There is an answer. There has to be an answer. There is an answer. There is an answer. Hey, bakata, kata, balakata. I can't be stranded forever. There is an answer. Seke toko shoto barakata. Hidden in the spirit of wisdom is an answer. A strange answer. Pray. Lord, there is an answer to my financial predicament. There is an answer to the challenge in my life. That you have not seen it and you have not received it does not mean it is not there. There has to be an answer to the challenges in my family. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive a strategy say it in the name of Jesus I receive the strategy out of confusion out of pain out of tragedy lift your voice and begin to pray there has to be a strategy he made his ways known to Moses by the spirit of wisdom there has to be a way. I cannot beg forever. There is a way to the anointing. There is a way to my ministry rising. There is a way. There is a way. There has to be a way. I receive, I receive divine strategies, illumination. You move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power, you perform miracles, there is nothing that's impossible, and I'm standing
listen. Let me give us one more prayer. By the grace of God, we are a people of prayer. Most of the churches and the body of believers within this region are a people who have received the spirit of prayer and supplication. But we lack the grace for creativity. We lack the grace for imagination. The breath of the spirit upon your mind. I like you to pray and say, Lord, grant me the grace to meditate. The grace to bet solutions from the realm of the spirit. The grace to use my mind to allow the Holy Ghost breathe upon my mind. Are you praying? God gave you a mind to bring victory to your life. He gave you a mind not just to watch things happen. Believe me, the solution is locked up within you. Allow the Holy Spirit to begin his work of creation. The answer will come. Pray. Baptize my mind. Baptize my mind. There is an answer locked up by the Holy Ghost. My mind can produce supernatural solutions. Hallelujah. Listen. The worst, the worst condition of a man is madness. In my opinion, the worst condition of a man is madness. Where the devil has hijacked your capacity to create. This is how companies come into being. This is how churches increase and expand. This is how business corporations rise. This is how individuals rise. They can stay with the Holy Ghost and say there's got to be a way. And they stay there and stay there until something comes from heaven. And they run with it and the vision speaks in the end. And their lives look miraculous. There is no mystery behind it. It's the sacrifice of meditation. Every religion, every sect, agrees on this one thing that meditation brings creation hallelujah lord may my mind be a channel for strategies to come from heaven lift your voice and pray may my mind be a channel oh, I live and move and have my being and nothing we Without you, Jesus, you are the air that I breathe. Can't live without you. Without you, in you I live and move and have my being. Nothing without you, Lord. Without you. Without
are worthy of my praise. I magnify your name. Thank you for the word that comes week in, week out, transforming our lives. Thank you for the capacity to be a blessing to the nations spiritually, in leadership, economically. Thank you for the many great men and women that God has raised from this house, through this house, by his hands. Thank you for your children, your spouse. Someone tell him thank you. Don't be tired. Thank you. Thank you for grace. Thank him for ease. Thank him for favor. Thank him for strategic relationships. Thank him for the anointing. Thank him for wisdom. Thank him for stamina. Thank him for courage. Thank you for the ministry of angels. Thank him for divine protection. Thank him for visibility, for preserving his honor upon our lives. For the things you have done, for the battles you have won, only you are worthy of my praise. Hallelujah. To God be the glory and may he accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Listen, do you know why many people do not experience the hand of God in their lives consistently? Among the many reasons, please lend me your attention, among the many reasons, it is that most believers take the faithfulness of God for granted. You know, when God brings you out of a place of pain, suffering, need, sometimes within a moment you forget the pain of yesterday. And we do not lay it to heart to say thank you. When God lifts you as a man of God, some of us, when you came here, you had no jobs. Some of us, when you came here, you had nothing. You had to trek your way here, discouraged with all kinds of causes, all kinds of manifestations. But look what he's producing out of your life. It's important that you learn to be grateful. Every time you take God for granted, he will not fight you. But the very state of ingratitude would authorize Satan to remind you of how you were before his mercy came. It's true. Ingratitude is a great doorway. You see, it brings back your past, the negative past to become your present. There are people who have gone from grace to grass because of ingratitude. There are people who have gone from grace to grass because they've taken God for granted. Never get to a point where you feel with or without God, I can still make it. There are preachers making that mistake. There are leaders making that mistake. There are parents making that mistake. There are millionaires and billionaires making that mistake. Money can deceive. Certificates can deceive. Anointing even can deceive. Influence can deceive. You must always remind yourself like the apostle will say, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am. Maybe this is a word for someone. You came to church but full of yourself, not with the humility you used to come with again. After all, you have some money in your account now. You have a house or some estates, wonderful, but he's charging you again. That whilst you are here, you must know that outside of, his God, of God's mercy, great people can be reduced to ashes. It is only by the mercy of God that the weak become strong. It is only by the mercy of God that the poor become blessed. It is only by the mercy of God that the ignorant become full of knowledge. Learn this as a principle. Teach those in your organization. Teach those within your influence. That every time you stand with abundance of any sort before you, learn humility. Let them ask you why you are still rolling while you are blessed. Then you remind them, like David said, I'm rolling and dancing before the Lord who took me from the wilderness and carried your father's kingdom and gave to me. Hallelujah. May a time never come where as a ministry we become full of ourselves and that we do not accord Jesus the glory that is due his name. We are not ashamed to let the nations know 
that we are all that we are and we are all that we have today it's not just because of Joshua Selman I have taught you there are times that your skill can be there as important as it is your ability to fish can be there you can be at the seaside the correct place having the correct tools your boat your net your skill and yet you will not catch fish mm. hallelujah and so father we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ let me remind us for the next five minutes as to why we are here I felt stirred in my heart to still do this to remind us Paul said I will not be negligent to bring you in remembrance of these things although ye already know them and I established in this present truth I put together about five or six points to help us again before we get to our teaching tonight very quickly number one why are you here why are you always here why will you continue to be here one to encounter God in order of priority the first reason why he's drawn you to this house to this place whether here on site or connecting online is to encounter God number two why are you here to access spiritual intelligence next time you come here on your way here and even while you invite the many that you invite to be on their way perhaps someone is connecting for the first time here on ground many many on you know online it's important to remind you that you're connected and you are here to access spiritual intelligence to understand the laws and the principles of the kingdom number three why are you here you are here to build your faith you are here to build your faith this is why we engage in prayer building up ourselves in our most holy faith as we pray in the spirit this is why we worship hallelujah build our faith there are different levels of faith there is no faith there is small or little faith there is great faith there is exceeding great faith our assignment is to help you by the word of God to transit through these various phases of faith and I hope you know that the kind and the quality of faith that you have meaning your conviction and your ability to respond to the Word of God determines the quality of your outcomes as far as your Christian experience is concerned you are here to build your faith number four why are you here you are here to receive help mercy and strength write that down the house of God is a place to receive help to receive mercy and strength tempted to give you two scriptures Psalm 20 and verse 1 20 and verse 1 just to buttress on that point the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble the name of the God of Jacob defend thee verse 2 it says send thee help from where his sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion and so you are here to receive help to receive mercy and to receive strength let's try Psalm 84 and verse 7 Psalm 84 and verse 7 they go from strength to strength everyone how many of them shout it one more time please every one of them in Zion who appears before the Lord that means every time you appear before the Lord there is a portion of strength strength that you receive so you are here to access help you are here to access mercy you are here to access strength number five why are you here listen carefully now you are here as part of your commitment towards kingdom advance this is the fifth reason why you are here this is the fifth reason why you come to the house of God you are here as part of your commitment towards kingdom advance when you participate in the prayers when you participate in the worship when you participate in giving when you participate in the attendance the gift of your presence and your attention all of these are expressions of your commitment every time you come every time you connect what you are saying is that Lord I am interested in your program and my attendance my participation in worship my participation in prayer my participation through my giving 
That means if you come to the house of God and whilst people are praying, you don't pray. You are not really participating. When you come to the house of God and people are worshipping and you are there just lost, distracted, maybe punching your phones, doing some things that you should not be doing. You see, it is a message you are sending to heaven that I'm not interested in you nor your program. If you are here and people are giving and you say, well, those who have money should give. Or perhaps you are not interested at all. Your worship, your prayer, your giving, and then your attention. Your attention. When the word of God comes, that is not the time to keep pinching yourself up and down. You will know immediately that is an attack. Hallelujah. You must sustain the discipline to endure sound doctrine. To settle down, hear the word of God. The same way a doctor ministers a, a, a medical prescription to a patient and tells the person, take these two in the morning, two in the afternoon, two in the night. Sometimes you are tired, you don't feel like taking it, but you remember that the doctor loves you and is interested in your being whole. And so you discipline yourself. The doctor will not be disciplined for you. He will prescribe the drug or the treatment. It is yours to follow. And if you follow as prescribed, you will see that you begin to enjoy health until you become perfected. I have taught us here, it is pride as a student to arbitrarily edit the things that you are being taught, especially when the people communicating it have proofs in that area. Now, men of God are not God. We make mistakes. We are people who are limited in knowledge. We are all growing. But with respect to the areas where there are results, it is foolish for people who do not have results to begin to edit when you have not produced results. When you produce results, you now are at a vantage position where you can now edit perhaps, maybe this is this way, but a student who comes into a lecture or a school for the first time, no. When you also become a PhD holder or a professor, then you can rub minds now as colleagues. And you can say, professor, even though you were a professor before me, have you considered this? My research has brought more addition to this and it will now make sense. But there are many believers with no results who are quick to edit everything they hear. And it's part of the reasons why many people remain stunted. May that be minus you in Jesus' name. The humility of heart to receive, the humility of heart to contend for light until you become. May God release that for you in Jesus' name. Amen. So you come to the house of God and you are here every week as part of your commitment towards kingdom advance. Can I give you two more? The number what now? The sixth reason why you are here is to fellowship with the saints. This is very important. You are not just here to encounter God alone. You can have that encounter in your room. You are not just here to encounter a man of God alone. You are here under this corporate anointing to fellowship with the saints. This is very powerful. The Bible encourages the fellowship of the saints. Kingdom relationships, kingdom connections are very important. Some of you is in coming to church, you will meet with your destiny helpers. It is in coming to church you can even meet with your spouse. It's in coming to church you can meet with someone who God can use to lift you. Hallelujah. I told you that when we are under the corporate anointing, the blessing is both vertical and horizontal. Coming from God through the man of God to you, but coming from God through the person seated around you to you. So you are receiving both ways. You may be listening to me right now, but you'll be amazed how many things God will teach you, not directly from me, but by someone, maybe that sense of courtesy and honor, maybe your neighbor's raptness and attentiveness to the word, despite what you know that they know. That can be a message for you already and take away an arrival mentality, you see. So while God is speaking through the man of God, God is also speaking through your neighbor. The final reason why you are here, empowerment. You are here for empowerment and that in ever increasing measures. You are here for empowerment. Empowerment to supply the spiritual wherewithal that helps you to become, that helps you to advance. You are here for empowerment. 
I remind you of these things so that every time you come, it does not become a ritual. There is no blessing when you just come religiously. You come and share the grace and not become. Everything that makes for every single koinonia service is tailor-made in the place of prayer, consecration, diligence, discipline to deliver maximally for the purpose of your spiritual growth. Hallelujah. Are we together? Are you ready for tonight now? Please lay your hands on your head. Father, speak to me. My heart is open to hear you. My destiny is open to rise. Clarity of understanding. Please play the strings for me. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless you. Are you praying? Ask the Lord to visit you today. Someone is praying. This is the least level I will be at. I will be at. After this service, I'm rising to a higher pedestal spiritually. For in Jesus' name we pray. Manifesting spiritual realities. Manifesting spiritual realities. You will be marvelously blessed tonight. I want to show you a very powerful secret in the spirit. Manifesting spiritual realities. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that there is a spirit realm and there is a physical realm. I'm teaching now. Please lend me your attention. The Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that there are various dimensions that man has the privilege of interacting with. And chiefest among them is the realm of the spirit or what we know from our earth standpoint to be the invisible realm and then the physical realm or the material realm that we call the visible realm hallelujah this is very important Romans chapter 1 and verse 20 please man has the privilege and the liberty of interacting with this realm we have the advantage of the duality of realms Romans 1 and verse 20 says for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things which are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse. So he's saying that the things that are manifest are a testimony to the fact that there is a realm that birthed them, that everything physical, everything material is a testament that there is another kind of reality beyond the material realm. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. Very profound statement that Paul made to the church in Colossae. It says, for by him were all things created. Let's read together. That are in heaven. You see that now? And that are in earth. Uh -huh, visible and invisible. One more time. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones. That means there are visible thrones. But there are invisible thrones. There are visible dominions. There are visible principalities. There are visible powers. But there are also invisible dimensions. That everything in the physical has its parallel in the realm of the spirit. Visible and invisible. Are we learning now? This is very important. Last scripture, Matthew chapter 3, 16 to 17. This is Jesus now. Jesus is in the physical realm, having become flesh. The Bible says when Jesus was baptized, they had an experience they had never had. The people there, not just Jesus. The Bible says straightway, he came out of a physical water and the heavens were open. And he saw the Spirit of God, not just descending from the sky, descending from that invisible realm that opened through the atmosphere. The Bible says they saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him, verse 17. And a voice. The voice did not speak from a radio station. The voice was not one of the people there. An invisible voice. But then it, it, it echoed through a visible realm and the people heard it. This is my beloved son. Meaning that the voice spoke a language that their minds could understand. 
in whom I am well pleased. So it is clear that there is a spirit realm and there is an invisible, a, a physical realm. Listen, as simple as this sounds, you will never be able to manifest realities and that includes your destiny. If all you see and all you know is this three-dimensional realm, you are already disadvantaged for life. The consciousness, the awareness that there is a dimension, are we together? Above and beyond this physical realm already puts you at a vantage position. It is on this one reality that whether you serve Satan or serve God, if you are to excel in your spirituality, there is a mandate upon you that you must believe the existence of the realm of the spirit and the supremacy of the realm of the spirit. That means its ability to superimpose upon the physical realm. This is powerful. It is the reason why we are not discouraged when we see physical things. Because of the awareness that there is a reality in the spirit that is higher and greater than what we see. Are we together? So you can see someone who has been plagued by sickness. And you know that there are resources in the realm of the spirit that can be made available to that individual under a certain condition. My God, this is why you can see someone who is poor, dejected, and you come with that understanding that all that this man has is not all he can have. There are resources beyond the physical realm. The second thought that you need to know tonight is that realities are only made manifest. Realities are only made manifest when we learn how to transport these realities from the realm of the spirit to the physical realm. I'll take it again. Realities are only made manifest when we learn how to transport those realities from the realm of the spirit to the physical realm. That means those realities and those resources, whatever they are, they will do us no good provided they remain in the realm of the spirit. Are we together? We need to learn the spiritual technology that can translate those resources from the realm of the spirit to be made manifest. Someone tonight, you are hearing the real cure for poverty. You are hearing the real cure for all kinds of satanic oppression. You are hearing the real cure for manifesting your destiny. There are realities in the realm of the spirit. There are resources in the realm of the spirit beyond the imagination of the average person, beyond the imagination even of the saints. Our assignment is number one, to agree that they are there. Number two, to learn how to transport those realities. And this is my assignment tonight. Hallelujah. Watch this. How many of you know that once upon a time, and even until now, there are treasures beneath the earth where you are seated now? Only God knows how many treasures. Not even science can comprehensively exhaust the treasures and the mineral resources that are under the earth. Science is still learning. Are we together now? And there are resources under the earth. Now, whether you are aware or not, those resources are there. But whether they will become to your advantage has to do with your discovering their presence and knowing how to mine them from the earth. Are we together now? You can have a farm full of gold or diamond or iron ore or whatever it is and you can run around with that awareness. That awareness will not prosper you. Even though it's an advantage, you can tell everybody I have a plot of land or a hectare of land and I promise you I'm not lying. That land has within it gold, has within it diamond, has within it iron ore. In fact, you can even get a few people to help you test and they can say it's true. And yet you can remain dejected. You can remain poor and miserable. Because you must have the resources. Say resources. The intelligence to be able to mine it out. It says counsel is like deep waters. But a man of understanding will draw it out. 
Somebody is finding his way out finally. John chapter 1 and verse 14. The word became flesh. This scripture has inspired me for years. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Who are the us? Physical people. The word domiciled in the invisible realm through some technology found its way to have a material expression. And the Bible says we beheld. So it was not just a vision. When Jesus as the word became Jesus, the child, the baby, he was seen of men. He was seen of angels. You didn't need to be prophetic to see him. Once you were alive, you could see the baby wrapped up in a manger. They saw him as a teenager. They saw him when he grew to become an adult. Invisible things can become visible. Invisible resources can be transported to become a system of advantage to the believer. And I'm praying for you. Everything God has placed in the realm of the spirit that is needed for your destiny actualization. But through ignorance, it's been waiting there for years. May you sustain the intelligence to make it manifest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sit down please. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. Let's read NIV or the message translation. The Bible says, through faith, can we have any, okay. It says, by faith we understand, watch this, that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Can we have the message? Is that possible? MSG. It says, by faith, we see the world called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we do not see. What we do not see is what created what we see. Did you get that now? What we do not see, the invisible realm, is what created this realm. This thing you call anointing, do you see it? Show me anointing. Are you going to lift a bottle of... Um, um, olive oil and show me is that anointing does a tree produce anointing no the anointing can only be trapped in a material vessel like a mantle or whatever but where is that anointing when the bible says god anointed solomon where did it come from can you show me the remains of what fell on him yet you could not deny the effect it fell on a physical man he grew up and demonstrated intelligence are we together now? The things which appear, the crowds which appear, the resources which appear, the influence which appear, they are only a manifestation of realities that are available. Are we together now? And that if you know how to transport those realities, then you will live an invincible life of dominion even in your world today. When you lay hands on a sick person, you're not rubbing anything on your hands. What flows through you to that sick person? When you stretch your hands towards someone and he receives an impartation, where is the connection? What actually flows? From where? invisible resources but their reality can be proven in this realm here and now when you speak to men and say in the name of Jesus may God open the door can you show me the words where are the words can you hold it so why do you lift your hands to say I receive what are you receiving did you feel anything when you received yet you believe something rested on you and you go out carrying that consciousness and you return back rejoicing knowing sometimes the impact is so dramatic that even your physical stature cannot hold the weight of what rests on you yes it is invisible these are transactions happening listen they are spiritual transactions you cannot see it and yet your body attests to the fact that something is happening How about the fire you feel? How about the warmth, the movement of the anointing in your body while the word is coming? Burning within your spirit like it did to the men at, um, at Emmaus. What is responsible for it? You think it's just sounds? Can a speaker make you that convicted? 
can a mic make you that convicted? I'm just telling you that there are realities. You are here seated now. All you see is not all that is happening. If I ask you to describe all that is happening, you will say, I am listening to a man preaching. That is almost one over a hundred. There are many things happening. God is removing things. God is returning things. The Spirit of God is walking through angelic ministries, walking on the minds of people, just because you cannot see it. Are we together? As these words are coming, listen, the Lord is spreading these words by His Spirit to people so that what is leaving me is not the same thing resting on you. There are things being added on that rest on others. That is why you will be hearing different things even though it's the same person communicating. The realm of the spirit, the wealth of resources. So when God speaks to you, he speaks with the consciousness of the vast resources that are available to back you. Whether you are aware of it or not, see that now. Now, if I ask you a question, assuming you are a multi-millionaire, and I ask you, are you a millionaire? You say yes. If I say, where is the money? You say it's in the bank. Which bank and where is it? You are as confident, yet the money is not with you. But you are confident that I know that I have one million naira or one million dollars or whatever in the bank. You can beat your chest and say, I know I am a rich man. And have no pressure to prove it at all. You may put your hands in your pocket and bring out nothing. And yet nobody can dare tell you you are poor. So why do believers walk as though they are helpless? Simply because you touched your pocket and there was nothing physical there. Or your physical phone showed you zero, zero naira. And you use that to describe yourself. And heaven is saying, I, you are wasting potentials here. You do not understand the vast resources. So God helps you by coming to the, your dream life and showing you certain things that are available. You wake up and say, it's a lie. God can, can, is joking with me. Everything you see manifest in the life of the believer comes from somewhere. I want you to pay attention. I'm stimulating your creativity because the keys that I'm about to show you now, it will change your life forever. I tell you. Some of you will leave this place without any car, without anything, and yet you'll be jumping like a madman after this service because you will know that you have learned something. You have closed a door that Satan uses to discourage you and lie to you. Apostle, where are the members? They are first in the realm of the spirit. You are not able to see them there. That's why you will never see them physically. Where is the house? Where is the level in the spirit? Let me tell you the truth. Anything that ever manifests is because it found its parallel in the spirit. If it cannot find it there, it cannot be made manifest, including trouble. All kinds of troubles have their spiritual form. They can be pulled down from the realm of the spirit by the manipulation of spiritual laws, courtesy demons, and be made manifest. So men are manipulated mentally to act in a certain way that allows those laws to work against you. You call it tragedy. You call it all kinds of things. But there is an intelligent explanation to those things. Walk with me now. Hmm. There are two major challenges I wrote here with believers. And I want you to listen, please. As far as manifesting spiritual realities are concerned, there are two major challenges with believers. Number one, ignorance of the provisions. Right, please, I'll be slow enough for you to write. I need you to write this. Ignorance of the provisions and resources available to the believer in Christ. This is the first major challenge. Ignorance of the provisions. Ignorance of the resources available to the believer in Christ. This is the first challenge with believers. Ignorance of the provisions. Ignorance of the resources available to the believer 
in Christ. Two quick scriptures. Second Peter 1 and verse 3. The first major challenge with believers as far as manifesting spiritual realities is concerned is we are largely ignorant that there are even provisions and resources beyond this realm. Real provisions available as a system of advantage to the believer. Here's what the Bible says. According as his divine power hath given unto us, how many things? All things that pertain unto life and the things that pertain unto godliness. All things that pertain unto life and all things that pertain unto godliness have been given unto us. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Please shout it after me. Say all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings. One more time in concert. Say all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings. So this is what Paul says has been given to us. That he's given to us all spiritual blessings blessings another way to put it is all blessings but they are spiritual in nature are we together the first challenge is the challenge of ignorance of the provisions and the resources that are available to the believer in Christ what is the second challenge the second challenge is ignorance on how to convert those provisions to their material expressions. How to convert ignorance on how to convert those spiritual provisions to their material expressions for the profiting of the believer. I'll take it again. The second major challenge with believers is ignorance on how to convert the spiritual resources the spiritual provisions that are available for us in christ how to convert them to their material expressions for the profiting of the believer jesus put it powerful in matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. matthew 6 and verse 10 he says thy kingdom come that invisible influence of your government let it come by your will being done in this physical realm as it is in the immaterial realm that means let realities be made manifest in this realm the same way it is in the realm of the spirit ignorance on how to convert these spiritual realities to translate them from just being spiritual resources listen how many of you know that science and technology as we call it today is an attempt to show us that realities can be transported isn't it amazing that you can dig down to the earth ladies and gentlemen mine minerals that don't make sense mine oil a dark smelly paste of of accumulation of all kinds of decompositions over many years and put them together and now begin to pass them through various processes out of those minerals will come your phone out of that oil will come the gas that powers your generator powers your car and whatever it is so conversion is a possibility profiting does not happen at the point of discovery profiting happens at the point of conversion are we learning now if i gave you one jerry can of a dark smelly substance called oil it may not profit you so much until you go and pass it through a process that now distills everything and you can now get your fuel as we call it your gas and get other things byproducts from it many believers number one do not even know the provisions and the resources that are available and for those who know it just stops at knowing do you know healing is yours yes do you know abundance is yours yes do you know increase is yours yes do you know restoration is yours yes 
Have you experienced it? No. Why? The problem is the knowledge of the technology that converts those realities. Man of God, you need to hear this. If not, you'll be frustrated in ministry. Businessman, you need to hear this. If not, you'll be frustrated. When you go to the place where they make cars, all you are going to see is an architectural design, a 3D representation of that car, and all the metallic resources that will put that car together. But you step out and give the people a few days, a few months, and you will come back and find a real car that you can enter and drive a real car. It was not a car they found under the earth. They found metals, but they were able to combine it in a way that produce cars now with such beauty and elegance. Imagine what can happen to your life when you know how to convert these spiritual resources. Your life will become a wonder, first to you and any other person who cares to see. And may that be your testimony. By this revelation, let ashes and shame and everything that has mocked God, let it fade out of your life and destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you will rise from this understanding and build mighty ministries for Jesus. Mighty evangelical platforms for Jesus. Mighty businesses with transcontinental value based on the things you are receiving. It's true. It's true. It's the realm of your glory. It's the realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. It's the realm of your glory. It's the realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. So the ability to not only know that there are spiritual resources in a dimension that is greater than science, a dimension greater than the three-dimensional realm, and the ability to interact with that realm with such mastery that you can convert and bring to your domain all the resources that are available and needed for your profiting. The ability to convert these spiritual resources to their material expressions for the profiting of the saints. Now, let me give you the keys. There are a few keys that help men to transport spiritual realities of any kind and any sort according to the will of God and to give it material expression. And I please want you to believe the things you are about to hear because they will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. This is how great businesses in the kingdom have been built. This is how great visions in the kingdom have been built. This is how great enviable destinies. If you have ever looked at a destiny and wondered how did they do this, I want to show you how it happened right now. 
and I assure you by God it doesn't matter where you are in life and destiny if you pay attention the things I'm sharing with you have a grace following them it is not only the information you are going to receive some of you whilst you are hearing like I taught you there is the Spirit of God will be quickening you something there is an enlargement that will be happening to your spirit like a rubber ring something will be there will be a stretching in the spirit until greater glory glory in a, a greater measure is revealed through your life in the name of Jesus key number one <laughs> manifesting spiritual realities what is the first key that controls birthing transporting and bringing spiritual resources from the realm of the spirit where they are domiciled to the physical realm where they are needed for the profiting of the saints number one the first key contend all kingdom resources i must say this as a preamble all kingdom resources are first spiritual that's not the first key just a preamble to the first key all kingdom resources write this down please they are first spiritual that means they are realities that reside first in the realm of the spirit your prosperity your influence the anointing of the spirit upon your life everything that god has said is a reality in the spirit all kingdom resources are first spiritual they are realities that reside in the spirit realm now let me give you the keys number one what is the first key when you want to transport realities to be made manifest contend for light contend for light this is the first key light here means knowledge knowledge of the resources that are available for you in Christ you cannot open up your heart to receive resources whose availability and presence you are not even aware of hallelujah if I do a transfer to your account and you do not get an alert an email or any other way of knowing did you know say perhaps it were your house rent that I sent to you one million naira or two million naira or three million naira and you can be seated and praying saying God can you help me I'm in trouble my rent is expired the landlord is coming for me maybe they are serving me a court summon because I'm unable to pay my rent whereas two days ago three days ago a real transfer was made to your bank are we together and literally in a in, in, in a matter of seconds less than a minute you can make that transfer from your phone and find peace yet because you do not know you can be lamenting whereas your banker knows that you have an uh, you have some money there this is how it is with many believers they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course imagine the many things that God has kept for you that you do not know strategic relationships but first in the spirit strategic help but first in the spirit men and women raised by God to help you while you serve him but that reality is still in the spirit advancement restoration these are all possibilities and realities but that they are locked up they reside in the spirit everything needed for your excelling as a believer is already provided for this is a fact you have to train your spirit man and your mind to believe all things all things the Bible says all things are yours contend for light contend for knowledge this is why you came to church now you are hearing apostle are you saying that the cure for my rent issue is already in the spirit yes sir are you saying that I can walk free of this sickness that the provision the spiritual resources that can translate to a new body part the spiritual resources that can translate to health they are not coming they are already a reality there every one naira one dollar you will ever have and make in this life the reality of those resources are already in the realm of the spirit believe me
Do you believe this? Contend for light. Light beyond the realm of ignorance. Convince yourself by the Spirit of God. The entrance of His Word brings light. What you are hearing now is giving you confidence. It's killing away carnality. So Satan will tell you if it is true, where is the anointing man of God? Prove that you are anointed by laying hands on someone. Nothing happens. Don't worry. The problem is not the presence of that reality or, or, or the, the falsehood of what you believe. No. What you believe is the truth. It's just that you have not mastered how to convert it. How to make it a reality. Hallelujah. Contend for light. Let's hurry up. Number two. What is the second key? I want to dwell a bit on this second key because it is a miracle that changed my life. My God. It's easy for the average believer who has been in church to understand point one. Light. Every gathering in God's presence with God's people with a good teaching priest is a feast of light. But the reason why light does not profit many believers is because of the second point. Write this down. The second key to manifesting spiritual realities, I wrote here, press into the realm of consciousness and conviction. You just write it and I'll explain to you. Press into the realm of consciousness and conviction. Press into the realm of consciousness and conviction. Psalm 36 verse 9. For with thee is the fountain of life. Read the remaining line please. In thy light. One more time. There are two things the Bible is saying here. Number one is you need his light. But when his light arrives, that is not all you need. There is a kind of light you must see through his light. In your light, I have seen your light. But there is a light I need to see in the midst of your light. He says, in your light shall we see light. Press into the realm of consciousness and conviction. Now watch this. The word conscious means to be aware of and to have the ability to respond to. When they say you are conscious towards something, it means that number one, you are aware of that thing or that environment and that you have the ability to respond. To be conscious means to be awake onto or to be awake towards. So when you are sleeping, they call you unconscious with respect to that realm. Do you know why? Because even though you are alive, your consciousness is not there. You are sleeping. So two people can be discussing within the room. And although you are there, you may not hear what they are saying because you are asleep. When they wake you and give you a few minutes to get yourself together, now you are conscious of the environment. And what is the proof that you are conscious? You can respond intelligently. If I ask you, how are you? Or where did you keep the key? You can answer me. You may not be able to give me that answer while you are asleep. And yet you are not dead. Are we together now? So when we talk about being conscious, it means being alive unto a reality. And let me tell you the truth. Until you rise to a realm beyond just light, the realm of consciousness and conviction, you will never, never have those realities manifest. This is the assignment of a mystery in the spirit called meditation. Write it down, please. The assignment of meditation is to transport spiritual realities beyond the book, beyond the message, into your spirit, into your consciousness. The mystery that controls that transportation is called meditation. The second key, press into the realm of consciousness and conviction. To be conscious means to be aware of. Now watch this. I wrote something down here. You are conscious of a thing when it dominates your thoughts. 
Did you hear that? You are only conscious of a thing when it has gained dominance over your thoughts. That means your thinking has been influenced by that reality. Now it has come to a realm of consciousness. Look up please. How many of you have gone to any embassy whatsoever? Don't lift your hands. Maybe to go and apply for a visa. American embassy, UK embassy. You know how you think about it all through the night? You've thought about it. If for any reason you wake up, what is on your mind? You are imagining, I'm standing before the consular now. This dress I'm wearing, no, I'll change it. I don't want trouble. I need to get this visa. You see how your whole day, some of you, it affects your mood. You are not able to eat till you return. And it's not like it's a doctor that said you should not eat. You are just thinking. That thing has happened as a result of meditation. You literally see yourself you've never been to the embassy say you don't even know how it looks like yet your mind is so powerful your mind will simulate a consular officer standing there and yourself answering all kinds of questions that is how you are into that project let me tell you the truth those who build anything great are not just those who have wishful thinking they have become immersed into the thing that drives them the Bible calls it the zeal of the Lord. That the zeal of the Lord can consume a man. Are we together? To a point where what dominates your thoughts is the reality of that truth according to scripture. All through while Jesus walked upon the earth, he kept talking about the purpose for which he came. He kept talking about the fact that he was going to die. He will be buried. What kind of a man keeps talking about his death? You will call it negative confession. It was not negative confession. Jesus kept repeating, I'm going to die, oh, and I will come back to life again. To the point that Peter rebuked him and said, stop saying all these things. The reason why many people cannot become and they cannot manifest realities is that they have not taken the truths of scripture and meditated upon it until it moved past the realm of just information and sunk into your spirit something happens to a man when the word of God becomes spirit and life it occupies your consciousness you cannot be separated from that truth again you have so believed it, you have become one with it. Are we together now? Yes. This is very powerful. You have become one with that belief. You can't deny it again. You can't betray it again. The way you know that light has not entered your consciousness is that the moment it does not work, you are in a, you are in a hurry to divorce it because you never truly believed it. Hallelujah. So if, for instance, someone is a giver and you just hear one message against giving, you say, thank God, I've been looking. You never believed in giving. Never. 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 Consciousness. When you get to that point, the day you meditate on your being anointed, one day, as you are opening the scripture, light, it will no longer be Thou anointest my head with oil. That is stories. A day will come, something will leap upon you. And whether you are sleeping, whether you are wearing a pajamas or on jean or on suit, the consciousness, not just by shouting and saying, I'm anointed, is a settled reality. Let me tell you with all humility, I sat down with this book and as I meditated upon it, it didn't happen every day but one day certain things just entered my spirit so this is how much power the believer can carry it says you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth when I saw it I don't know if I believed it the first time I was just sincerely reading the Bible but one day light entered me the true spirit of dominion that there is no territory that sustains the power to fight your influence. If you have not carried the consciousness of certain things, you will only be a victim. Your mind will be swinging from left to right. One day I meditated on the scripture that says, whatsoever he doeth, 
prospers. Now, let me tell you, that looks like a simple story. Oh, yes, whatsoever I do, it prospers. Amen. That, no, you have not gotten it. You act on that thing, it will never work for you. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of waters. One day is by 2 a.m. in the morning. This is you. Shama kaparakata You are meditating on that thing. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. You look at your hands. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. It will make sense to you in a way that will annoy somebody close to you because they don't know what has entered you. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. From that day, you will never fail in anything again because it has entered your consciousness. This is what it means in Ezekiel 2 and verse 2. And the spirit entered into me the spirit of any revelation if it has not entered you you will keep gyrating this is the problem with the body of christ we shout over revelations that have not moved past the realm of knowledge into your consciousness in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed i meditated on that scripture and I came to a conclusion that I cannot be a cause to my world. In this shall the families of the earth be blessed. Where I come from notwithstanding is, is a blessing that God gave to Abraham and his seed. And Galatians 3.29 says, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So he's talking about me. I am a blessing. If I come to your house, I am a blessing. Some things must leave and some things must come. If I shake hands with you, it's not pride. Some things must leave and some things must come. If you listen to me, some things must leave and some things must come. It's a consciousness. It's not about empty boasting. You can be shouting and the realm of the spirit will say, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? This is what great men like Bishop Oyedeko meditated upon. And he said, God told him he canceled his ministrations. And he said, get down and make my people rich. Now, that may, a lot of people will find it offensive. That's why he didn't say it to everybody. He said it to the one who can believe him. Hmm. Hallelujah. This is what I believe. Oh. This reading things randomly. When the spirit of revelation comes to you, eh, you can stay on one scripture for one week. It's not a competition to finish the Bible. It's that one scripture that has a treasure that defines the next 10 years of your life. You stay there till the spirit of that word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall. He never said I shall not want money. If all you are thinking about is money, it's a sign that you are thinking carnally. I shall not want. This is the realm of sufficiency. I shall not want men. I shall not want things. I shall not want influence. No. This revelation damages insufficiency forever. Never will you be without help. If God sent you to America, you shall not want. If he sends you to Europe, you shall not want. If he brings you to Abuja, you shall not want. You are crying simply because you do not know. You are wanting. Even though you are reading the scripture, it is not yet in your consciousness. Take it higher for me. We will pray until we are changed. We will pray until we are changed. We will pray until we are changed. We are changed. We are changed. We will stay until we are changed. Can I tell you the truth? 
there is nothing you can do with a man that has caught light beyond the book if it has entered that realm of consciousness only death can stop it from happening it's a, it's a realm where it is settled no matter what you say or do not say as far as that result happening is a realm listen this is a reality that both science and religion tell you that controls manifestation the realm of consciousness listen let me tell you the truth still take it high for me there are things I believe I can never be a victim of till Jesus comes and this is not empty talk I have stayed with scripture until that thing one of it is that I can never lack the help of men no no it's not because I'm anointed is the revelation that brought that anointing this thing you see this grace called favor that we are shouting you read it you will never get it it that's not how it works we will stay until we are found 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 we will stay When God called me into ministry, I took time to pray. One of the things I covenanted with God with was that I did not want to manipulate God's people because of this money thing. I saw sincere, well-meaning people who love the Lord. But once you are pushed by the pressure of ministry, you will do things you never planned doing. But I know that I have to eat. And the implication of ministry is that you will feed many people. You will be like Father Abraham, having many children, your own and the ones that have forced themselves to be your own. And I said, God, I don't want to tell people lies. I had great men like Bishop Oyedeko, great men like my dear revered mentor, Dr. Miles Munro. They talked about the potency of walking in the blessings of God while others were there arguing in pride with no result I said God you can't be lying please show me I confess my ignorance I have read this thing but it's not working there are human beings in the world but nobody's looking my direction I don't need to go to a herbalist there is a way Kai. Job said there is a path which no fowl has seen that the whelps of the lion has not gotten there when I caught that revelation of I shall not want I said this is it and God is able to make all grace if you think what prospers men is business get ready to suffer till Jesus comes now I'm not I'm not against those things don't get me wrong but first things first the realm of the spirit is what controls the physical realm but when you hold it there bar that's it you've held it you've held it it's true the same thing with the ministry of the spirit, the anointing. I saw great people that I admired walking in dimensions of the anointing. And I said, there has to be a way. I got all the teachings and the materials. I don't want to do a ministry speaking to people and they're shouting amen. Coming week after week, making sacrifices and then they don't testify. That is evil and is wicked. In fact, it's fraud. I said, I don't want that kind of thing. Father, show me the secret to real power. Real, genuine power. I have found David, my servant. Ah, So God can find men, but until he finds his servant, he will not anoint you. God can find Joshua Selman, but he's looking for his servant. For as long as you are still Joshua Selman, that oil will not come to your head until you become his servant. The anointing is not for men of God. The anointing is for servants. Genuine people who love Jesus beyond their reputation, who want to see him glorified. You see. You know why sometimes you hear me tell these guys to play these things? This is not 
it's not a movie one day I was meditating on scripture and the Lord took me to the story of Elisha he said bring me a mistral and while the mistral played he said the hand of the Lord came upon him and he began to prophesy then he says I will reveal my dark sayings upon the heart it may not work for everyone but that is how light came to me I valued divine presence when I meditated on the scripture Moses said do not send us from here if your presence I'm showing you how to manifest realities what provided what you are doing is just reading the Bible to ease the guilt of feeling less spiritual you will never never produce anything potent he said if your presence will not go with us and then here's what he said he said my presence will go with you and I will give you rest I said that's the key to rest the presence of God I remember in 2005 I spent a major part of that year doing a research on Jewish worship and the mystery of God's presence. I wanted to know what was it about Jewish worship and God's presence. That's when you saw that I started falling in love with all these kind of Paul Wilbur songs, King of Kings, we hail you most high. All these songs that came laid down by the Spirit because I found out that there was a connection to these kinds of songs and the Spirit of God and the Shekinah of God. Listen, you must move past the realm of just reading scripture and get it to your consciousness. It will take time, but allow the Spirit of God move it. Stay in your one room and read the scripture on how God brings men out. The day it enters your spirit, you will know. The devil will know. Everything around you will know. And like a magnet, it will start drawing from anywhere on earth. The men and the circumstances that must make that word become reality in your life. I assure you on this. Listen, hear me. The day the power to prosper through meditation comes on you, right where you are, you know how and you know how explosions happen. A nuclear bomb, huh? That's how it will, from your place, it's like an explosion in your spirit. It will gravitate everything that must make that revelation true in your life. And it will bring it to your life. It is true. Sometimes it's difficult to teach these things because people mistaking it for pride. But by the privilege of God's grace, you see, we have proven these things and will prove it again and again and again. your consciousness the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want it doesn't stop there but that is the springboard the Lord not my ability the Lord here's how many of us interpret it my brain is my shepherd I shall not want <laughs> no. the Lord the journey to lasting wealth starts with the Lord. It does not ignore your mind. It does not ignore your value. But it is the Lord. Because he must be Alpha and Omega. Are we together? Sit down. Let me give you the third. For someone, let me give you a little assignment. Just lay your hand gently on your head. I want you to think of one scripture by the Spirit that you know. There are many scattered in the Bible, but one bailout scripture that you need to meditate upon until light enters your spirit. For some of you, is thou anointest my head, thou anointest my ministry. Are you seeing that ministry anointed rising from where it is? Are you seeing yourself rising? as a father of nations you may not be physically called abraham but ladies and gentlemen 
when what God told Abraham enters you, nothing will keep you down. You just do what I'm asking you to do and you see a miracle that is happening to your spirit man. You are a businessman. Take away your mind from your brain and look unto Jesus. Some of you are in ministry, you have struggled and struggled. It's not an issue of struggling. There is a consciousness. For as long as there are 8 billion people on earth, everybody will not tell God no. He can fish help for you from everywhere. There are some of you, the revelation for you should be that God is the one who gives you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. Mm. I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to prosper. I am the Lord that teacheth thy hands to prosper. You have to be taught. No, it's not your ability. You are taught. You just take a minute to meditate on this. Some of you, is that meditation that will cure you from causes forever. Raised up with him out of every tribe, out of every tongue, even the worship of the dead. Yes, people were buried in my village but have been exalted. Exalted beyond every curse. Exalted beyond every charm. Any enchantment. For someone, the revelation for you is no weapon formed against you. Formed in the secret, formed by the conspiracy of men, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. For another, surely they shall gather. But because they are gathering of not of the Lord, they will scatter as much as they have gathered. They will come in one way and be dispersed in seven ways. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hear me. Psalm 119 from verse 97 to 99. Let's hurry up. Psalm 119, 97 to 99. Meditation involves hearing. Meditation involves speaking. Meditation involves the power of your imagination. All of them have to come into play as you meditate. Oh, how I love thy law, he says. They, or it is my meditation. How long? Thank you for watching this video. Please, if you have not subscribed, do it now. Also, turn on your notification bell to keep receiving videos on this channel. Thank you.